European rabbits with scientific name Oryctologus cuniculus were first introduced to Australia in the 18th century with the first fleet, and later became widespread likely because of the two dozen rabbit that was sent as Christmas gift to the man named Thomas Austin. Such wild rabbit populations are a serious mammalian pest and invasive species in Australia causing millions of dollars worth of damage to crops. Their spread may have been enhanced through the emergence of strong crossbreeds. Hello and welcome to Knowledge TV Facts. If you're new to my channel hit that subscribe button for more interesting videos. Thank you. Rabbits were first introduced to Australia by the First Fleet in 1788. They were bred as food animals, probably in cages. In the first decades, they do not appear to have been numerous, judging from their absence from archaeological collections of early colonial food remains. However, by 1827 in Tasmania, a newspaper article noted, dot the common rabbit is becoming so numerous throughout the colony, that they are running about on some large estates by thousands. We understand, that there are no rabbits whatever in the elder colony, like in New South Wales. This clearly shows a localized rabbit population explosion was underway in Tasmania in the early 19th century. At the same time in New South Wales Cunningham noted, rabbits are bred around houses, but we have yet no wild ones in enclosures. Dot dot quote. He also noted the scrubby, sandy rubble between Sydney and Botany Bay would be ideal for farming rabbits. Enclosures appear to mean more extensive rabbit farming warrens, rather than cages. The first of these, in Sydney at least, was one built by Alexander Maclay at Elizabeth Bay House, a preserve or rabbit warren, surrounded by a substantial stone wall, and well stocked with that choice game. In the 1840s, rabbit keeping became even more common, with examples of the theft of rabbits from ordinary people's houses appearing in court records and rabbits entering the diets of ordinary people. In 1857-1858, Alexander Buchanan, overseer for F. H. Dutton's Anlaby estate in the mid-north of South Australia, released a number of rabbits for hunting sport. Their population remained fairly stable until around 1866, presumed to have been kept in check by native carnivores and were protected by an act of parliament, but by 1867 was out of control. The population explosion was ascribed to the disappearance of native predators, but the emergence of a hardier breed by natural selection has subsequently been attributed to their spread. The current infestation appears to have originated with the release of 24 wild rabbits by Thomas Austin for hunting purposes in October 1859, on his property, Barwon Park, near Winchelsea, Victoria and by 1866, the Geelong Advertiser reported 50,000 having been killed by hunters. While living in England, Austin had been an avid hunter, regularly dedicating his weekends to rabbit shooting. Upon arriving in Australia, which had no native rabbit population, Austin asked his nephew William Austin in England to send him 12 grey rabbits, 5 hares, 72 partridges, and some sparrows so he could continue his hobby in Australia by creating a local population of the species. At the time, he had stated, the introduction of a few rabbits could do little harm and might provide a touch of home, in addition to a spot of hunting. William could not source enough grey rabbits to meet his uncle's order, so he topped it up by buying domestic rabbits. One theory as to why the Barwon Park rabbits adapted so well to Australia is that the hybrid rabbits that resulted from the interbreeding of the two distinct types were much more suited to Australian conditions. Many other farms released their rabbits into the wild after Austin. It wasn't until after Austin received his rabbits, however, that the creatures started taking over. Their population expanded across the country at a rate of more than 60 miles per year, covering the whole continent within half a century, per Nature News. In 1865, Austin told the local papers that he'd killed 20,000 rabbits on his property. To determine the infestation's origins, the researchers conducted a genomic analysis of 187 European rabbits caught between 1865 and 2018 in Australia, Tasmania, New Zealand, Great Britain and France, for The Guardian. They found that most rabbits from the Australian mainland were genetically similar and had a mix of wild and domestic ancestry. The Australian rabbits also had several genetic similarities to rabbits in southwest England where Austin's family gathered the animals to send, for science. The researchers examined mitochondrial DNA, which is passed down by the mother, to determine that many of the Australian rabbits descended from five females introduced from Europe. 
Finally, the rabbits that were caught farther away from Barwan Park, where Austin lived, showed less genetic diversity, which also indicated to the researchers that the rabbit invasion could have originated there. Austin's imported rabbits had wild ancestry, which could explain in part why they thrived in Australia. Wild rabbits were probably better than domestic ones at avoiding predators and surviving in challenging terrain. Still, David Peacock, an ecologist at the University of Adelaide in Australia, doesn't believe Austin should take all the blame for the rabbit infestation. In 2018, he co-authored a study theorizing that multiple rabbit introductions led to the species invasion. He tells science that other rabbits were released in Australia at the same time as Austin's. The rabbits were extremely prolific creatures and spread rapidly across the southern parts of the country. Australia had ideal conditions for a rabbit population explosion. With mild winters, rabbits were able to breed the entire year. With widespread farming, areas that might otherwise have been scrub or woodlands were, instead, turned into vast areas with low vegetation, creating ideal habitats for rabbits. In a classic example of unintended consequences, rabbits had become so prevalent within 10 years of their introduction in 1859 that 2 million could be shot or trapped annually without having any noticeable effect on the population. It was the fastest spread ever recorded of any mammal anywhere in the world. Today, rabbits are entrenched in the southern and central areas of the country, with scattered populations in the northern deserts. Although the rabbit is a notorious pest, it proved useful to many people during the depressions of the 1890s and 1930s and during wartime. Trapping rabbits helped farmers, stockmen, and stationhands by providing food and extra income, and in some cases helped pay off farming debts. Rabbits were fed to working dogs and boiled to be fed to poultry. Later, frozen rabbit carcasses were traded locally and exported. Pelts, too, were used in the fur trade and are still used in the felt hat industry. Numerous control measures have been in place to control rabbit population. Shooting rabbits is one of the most common control methods and can successfully be used to keep already low populations in check whilst providing food for people or pets, though it is ineffective for large-scale eradication. Some control measures are poisoning, destroying warrens through ripping, plowing, blasting, fumigating, trapping and fencing is widely used, especially on large farms. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button.